Welcome back to Module 2 on your Annual Update, Section B on the Use of Time. If this is your first year in base camp, then the next step, Step 4, entering your use of time for the whole school counseling program for last year and this year, is relatively easy. That's because for now, estimating the percentage of time you spent in various activities last year and predicting the percentage of time you'll spend in activities this year are just both guesses or estimates. Now, if you continue to use the annual update going forward, and we hope you will, we strongly suggest that you use the use of time calculator, which we will explain later on, to collect data so you can actually put your actual time use data into that format for one week in the fall and one week in the spring. Now, we know it's a pain to collect time use data, and we agree. I don't know any counselor who loves collecting time use data for those two weeks. But I have heard many school counselors who have said that once collected, their use of time data was the most impactful tool in their toolbox when advocating for more time to work with students. I guess it's no pain, no gain. It certainly applies here. But for now, in step four, you'll be entering a rough guess. The hardest part of this step probably is understanding the different use of time buckets defined by ASCA. Here they are, all four, with the Cliff Notes versions of each of these primary time use categories. ASCA says that all of the activities you do as a school counselor fall into one of these four broad categories, including direct services, which are activities where you're working directly with students in individual meetings, small groups, classroom presentations, or other activities. And this is important that are correlated to the school counseling program's goals. ASCA further divides direct services into classroom instruction, appraisal and advisement, and you can add scheduling in here too, and student counseling. Each of these categories should be fairly clear, and you'll learn more about them later on. Next, indirect services are those activities that are still focused on students but take place without students being present. ASCA further breaks down these activities into consultation, collaboration, and referrals. But for our purposes, this category is still focused on students and related to the school counseling program's goals, but just not done with students in the room. This might include talking with a colleague or a parent or a mental health agency about a student need, or perhaps facilitating a, or preparing for a teacher-parent conference, etc. The next time use category is called Program Defining, Managing, and Assessing. And like the previous two categories, these activities here aligned to the school counseling program's goals, but are tasks that occur behind the scenes. These activities might include collecting and analyzing student data, creating the monthly parent newsletter, or working on a comprehensive counseling model like you're doing right now. ASCA also includes here, and this is interesting, activities that they call fair share activities. These fair share activities may not be directly correlated to the school counseling program's goals, but they're activities that all members of the school staff have to take equal turns doing, like hall monitoring or bus duty or other tasks. And doing these tasks is simply fulfilling your fair share, so to speak, like everyone else in the school. The fourth and final bucket, non-school counseling tasks are, we believe, pretty self-explanatory. You and your administrator may differ on what falls into this fourth area of time use. So we suggest keeping a list of what activities you and your staff categorize as non-school counseling tasks. Those might come up when you have potential future discussions. We'll talk more about these categories and scheduling time for using the use of time calculator in the fall and spring later on in Module 5. One thing to note is that ASCA recommends school counselors spend 80% or more of your time in some combination of direct and indirect services to students. 80% is an easy figure for counselors and administrators to remember, and for many programs, a good goal to aspire toward. It's also a good percentage to use in discussions with your administrator and advisory council. You might say something like, um, to be considered a high quality, highly effective school counseling program, the national standard is that at least 80% or more of our time is focused on either direct or indirect services to students. When you say it like that, it's a hard goal to argue with and an important figure to remember in conversations about how to increase your impact on student success. For now, you're just estimating these time percentages for last year and guessing what they might be for this school year. So click on the pencil icon in step four 
take a few minutes now to enter your best guess of the percentage of time that you spent for the entire school counseling program, that's all the counselors in your program, how much time or percentage of time you spent in each of the four categories in the previous school year. Then go to the other side of the table and give it your best estimate for the current school year, what you think you're going to be spending your time in, in which of those four buckets. And very important, make sure each column adds up to 100%. Don't worry right now about making it perfect. Try to avoid getting hung up on what specific activities go into which categories. Just give it your best guess for now. In Module 5, we'll encourage you to measure actual time use this school year and use those figures for future annual updates.